So in this video today, I am going to cover my own personal keyword research strategy. Uh, which I'm going to ultimately call the ultimate keyword research methodology to get a or find keywords that can generate a 10, 20, or even 30 times ROI on your campaign. And when I say ROI, I might, you know, basically screw it around. Uh, you know, that means generating a $3,000 return on a, uh, a $10 budget or uh, sorry, a $100 budget, that would be what it is. So anyway, with that, I'll explain how I find the keywords, which a big part of getting a 30 times return on your money is really just about the keywords. I'm gonna talk about the other things that you need to do to make sure to accompany your keyword research so you get the 30 times return and really put it in a simple format that you or anyone could follow really. I personally came up with this method after testing every which way of putting together keywords for Google search campaigns for at least the last seven years to find the ultimate way, which is why I call it the ultimate keyword uh, research method or guide here for you to use and to you know capitalize on for all the heartache and pressure and time that I went to go and try to find in, in my uh, on insatiable greed to find a, a method that would get a 30 time ROI on the campaigns where I needed it. Sometimes, of course, we're not, we're settled for, you know, your typical eight to one return or 10 to one return. But if you were in that category of person where you don't get up out of bed unless you have a 30 times return, well, there's actual methods right here and, and, and systems right here in this video that will actually make those kind of numbers possible. And I know they're possible because I've done it many times myself in a situation uh, where we're looking for a 10 times return and arbitrarily got 30X on a certain portion of the campaign that met basically all these uh, you know unique individual aspects here, which I'm going to uh, reverberate to you here so you know what was done to get those returns and how you're gonna be able to get them for yourself. So. Anyway, personally, like, like I said, this is personally what I use on all the campaigns that I set up. I've set up hundreds of campaigns, and this is the best way to do the keyword research that I found to get really good returns. Uh, at least eight to one would be our minimum standard. And uh, why this is actually, if you don't, or if you don't, if you're not starting out with very much money, this is the ultimate way to start out. You know, investing on Google Ads. Don't you know, fall or drink the Kool-Aid that, you know, perhaps uh, somebody else has given or given to you that uh, has made it seem like it was easier, you know, only takes you an hour to do keyword research and set up a campaign to get a, a great return, like an eight to one or greater return. Unless you're at a space where you're the only one doing what you're doing and, and you know, people are rabid for what you sell, it's gonna take more than an hour of work to get those kind of returns. But uh, you know it's all worth it at the end of the day. Part of this can be outsourced, so don't uh, worry about the amount of work that it takes. Just know that m all your competitors aren't going to be willing to do this work. So therefore, when you do what you do, even if they see you do it, they're not going to be willing to go and replicate it themselves because most people aren't going to be uh, willing just you know, to, to do it. And I know that because I've looked at hundreds of campaigns and I know what people are willing to do versus not willing to do. That's why I can stand here with confidence and tell you if you follow this system, you actually will get the results as well. So anyway, so as usual, I have a short list of things to be able to follow a PPC money-making strategy like I do on my other videos. So I'm gonna go through those here. So the first one is how mo most people do their keyword research and where they actually go wrong to where they're not getting at least an eight to one return, but let alone 10, 20, or 30 times return on their, their actual ad spend through Google or through Bing. And that is, going back to what I touched on a minute ago, is they aren't spending enough time and thought and effort into the keyword research process. You could kind of think of like the keyword research process as like the foundation when you're building a house. The foundation's on you know, crappy, uh, soft soil, shaky soil, 
your whole everything you do after that isn't going to really be that great no matter what you do and you have to be able to identify especially if you're starting out with little money and you need a 10 to 1 return like right away so you're able to get it and that comes from figuring out where the holes are there's certain and every market has them holes in terms of what keywords can be selected which is why you use this keyword method here methodology that i have here you could find them to be able to make money on a campaign right away in the first you know 30 even to 60 to 90 days start out with a couple thousand dollars and build something up to where you're making millions of dollars a year after you know a few years of recycling the profit back into your your ads that what they're actually doing wrong is they're going after head terms right away and as you know or probably know by now if you set up, uh, set up a new account in google ads now they give you keyword selection choices right off the bat and within five minutes you could set up a campaign and be spending money with google which is great you know for google to help people that are totally clueless and don't want to put any more effort in if you do want you know these extraordinary returns that almost nobody gets you have to put the extra effort in to do these things and so uh you know to get to have an example let's i get as a hypothetical business let's say you have a a software that that's a compliance software to help people um in terms of the, in the financial space be compliant with all the you know compliance regulation paperwork and so on and so forth that they have to do it's a you know a real uh business of course and um you know, with that, they, what people will do is they might just choose what Google suggests to them, but for something specialized like that, maybe Google didn't do a good job, but they will then, or after a little period of time, uh, they'll think a little bit harder, but then all they will do is just target compliant software. Uh, or the most sophisticated they will get to is financial compliant software. And that seems all right, right, at surface? And it's actually wrong because there's a lot of competition even in a space like that everybody knows what google ads is everybody wants those customers who's going to get them as the person who does it right or better than what other people are going to do as i said on other videos there's 10 to 20 percent of the advertisers on google ads that make 80 percent of the money and 90 percent of the people who start their, with their ads quit because they don't put enough time and effort into it to make it work or they think they're not going to put effort into it until it starts making money which if you go in with that attitude it will never make money versus if you go in no you're going to make it work no matter what no matter what it takes and then actually and then do it, it not focus on the money but focus on creating a user experience that beats the competition for the user google rewards you and therefore you make you know, the returns that you're actually looking for so in, in other words not trying to shortcut it and with that said, if you want these returns, don't compromise on any of the individual parts. Uh, it's all worth it at the end of the day. You're, you're going to self-finance with very little money a multi-million dollar a year ad campaign for yourself. So don't uh, cut yourself short. But they always do what I call the head terms. Or they'll just, or, and then they, another thing is that they do is they'll say, oh, my competition's doing it, therefore it's good enough just showing up to the party isn't good enough anymore the ads are too expensive google has raised the price too much which is not a bad thing it forces people to then compete to actually be in that top 10 percent and which is it's also it's always pushing people to have a better and better sales funnel uh to, in order to survive if you will and so if, if you are on top google will reward you handsomely for that and it's not that much more work to do it the right way well I, I shouldn't say that it actually is but in the sophistication and knowledge and all that that it takes it's not a lot and you're and as far as the keywords research is here as far as the other parts of building a search campaign to make it work on, based upon me trying it out for hundreds of campaigns and having to guarantee our clients results there's other videos that talk about how to structure a campaign and so forth we're going to actually go and explain exactly how I do my keyword research here and how you're going to go and automatically be able to do better than everyone in your entire market because virtually nobody does this. So anyway, within that, the average person might get a 2x return on their campaign spend, which is not a good, good enough return to keep going with it or 
they'll stay with that and because they aren't tracking things very well or have done research on the results they need they're losing money but they keep going with it and don't even know they're losing money and that happens way more often than you would think or they're basically making a little to nothing versus the 20 times return that you know the top guy can get on a certain port of or portion of their keywords is going and and kind of saying what I was saying before, the average person will spend 15 minutes on their keyword research, whereas I'm spending 20 hours on keyword research. And I'm finding out, you, I'm walking backwards and find out how people are, what's the actual problem we're solving with the product or service, and or how is the exact way that the typical person that knows exactly what they want are typing into Google to find hopefully what we sell and giving them exactly that. If you're selling a certain size of valve or bolt, you're giving them, you know, the three and a half inch U-bolt that they're looking for. That nobody else is going to have an ad just for that. And I'm setting up an ad for just that. Doing, and then once you identify there's enough search volume to bid on that term like that, you're been spending keyword research time finding all the keywords of all the products you have in stock. And as insane as that sounds, you can use a data entry person to help you find that out. And, it's, and it makes so much money, you cannot not do it. But going back to my, like in the service business itself, compliant software specifically, you want to call software as a service, a service here. Uh, in regular services, it's, a, it's all the same thing. Uh, you go and you find out all the different ways that, what are the problems that that software solves? And then you, once you get an idea, you can, and you can do that through keyword research tools, like uh, instead of just using what Google suggests, which is what everybody else is doing that don't make the 90% that don't make really anything, they're doing keyword research on their own and they're using tools like SpyFu, Uber Suggest. Those are the two main tools I use. Finding out an idea and not just stopping when they see an idea, then they go and try to find synonyms that are related to that idea and ancillary terms. And so like I gave you in the previous example, uh, once they find out people are searching for a certain size bolt, well, then you try to get all the size, different size bolts. In the compliance software space, there's individual regulations that you have to have. Uh, you have to submit compliance paperwork for every year, and that they have specific codes. RJ12, um, you know, is the name of the actual compliance report that you must generate. So why bid on a term like? financial uh, uh, reporting software or compliance reporting software where you could bid on the exact thing that the problem solves and that nobody else is searching for yet. RJ12 compliance automation software. It's exactly what they want to hear by the way. And then once you find out through SpyFu, you could you can look for your competitors campaigns there and in the process it'll show keywords that their ads show up for that they probably, or should I say, don't have ads set up for every single one of those compliance things, then you can take the idea that they give you and then run with it, like I said before. And so anyway, that's what you do. And you spend 20 hours going through and finding all those keywords. Now there's an actual method, and so we're simplifying things. So here's the actual method that I use to be able to get the 500 keywords or 1,000 or 2,000 keywords that go over those exact terms, those buying terms like I mentioned that are gonna get the 20 or 30 times X return. that nobody else is willing to do, but because you've done it, you crush it on those terms. and get makes enough money to instantly start pumping up your ad campaign in terms of the spend and the money that you're making. So anyway, the method that gets you the 20 times return like clockwork that I found or very closely guaranteed every time that you can do it First thing is writing down all the individual products and subservices you have. So, you know, sometimes you're obviously like in the compliance software space, it's just one individual product. There's, you know, different products for different uh, parts of the compliance process. And if you have that, then you write down each one. And from there, uh, and then you go to the, right on to the second step, write down all the alternative ways to describe the above. So, if the compliance software is supposed to uh, deal with um, the, you know, like the tax reporting issues, then you write down what are the derivatives of tax re uh, tax reporting into the, in terms of the financial uh, management space that 
are related to that same thing. Again, like I mentioned before, you'll go out and whip out the thesaurus. I use that all the time to find synonyms. You find one synonym and then you search that in the thesaurus and then you find other synonyms related to that. You spent, go to SpyFu, you start looking for different ways that they're searching for that one exact thing. You're taking that keyword, then you're typing it in SpyFu by itself, finding other terms it generates. You're going into Ubersuggest, you're finding different things there. You're going into the Google Keyword Tool, you're finding things there and what you find there. You bring back into SpyFu again and you go back and forth and all just exhaust every possible thing you can think of. If you, and then on top of that, you could go to support forums where people are asking questions about this thing and look for absolute gem pieces of ideas there uh, that people are typing in it that you know that you can have a keyword idea from around that. And then once you find it and get a hold of that, then you then dig it and find all the other ones that are similar to that and so on and so forth. And you do that though on each individual product or service that you have. So, so, and obviously, it'll in some businesses, like if you sell printer toner, it will be the same methodology for every product. But your pro if your products are different enough to where they don't type in the same thing, so you got to do this for every single product that you have. If you don't have time, you for some reason don't believe in what I'm telling you here, do it for one product, see the return you're getting, and then, you know, first of all, you can thank me, but you'll be able to instantly know the profit you're going to make once you do it for all your different products and services that you have. Anyway, the third step is add a modifier that differentiates uh, your product and service from everything else and or signifies buyer intent, one or the other. So sig differentiates your product or service from everything else or sign signifies buyer intent. So once you find the keyword like, you know, RJ12 uh, paperwork compliance automation tool, right? Um, yeah, and, so, and with that, if I saw tool as a keyword, by the way, just I didn't say it before, what else, you know, you, you pick apart the different parts of the keyword. What else are synonyms of tool, service, uh, what else, on and on. And then, so each individual part of the phrase that you find that is on SpyFu or whatever, you're actually digging into each individual word in there. But apart from that, what you're going to then do once you've found all those is you're going to then search for, you keep going with the keyword research, and you so identify what your product or service does that's diff, totally different from the rest of the market. And add, so if, you, if it's cheaper, add cheap, or cheaper, or best value, or highest value, or affordable. So there's different ways of saying cheap. So you'll find all the synonyms for related to cheap using the thesaurus if you need to. And then you add those to the start of each of the original keywords that you found through the initial process of finding all the synonyms that describe the end solution uh, uh, or the exact technical specification or description of what you sell to get you a long tail, uh, you know, highly profitable term to begin with. And then on top of that, you're going to, if the you got to go one step further. So when somebody's looking for RJ compliant software and looking for inexpensive, obviously you can imagine if you now have an ad that shows up for that person, it literally says exactly what they typed in, inexpensive RJ7 compliant software. It was like, I already want to buy at that point in time. Uh, and so that, and that could be like my product, it, it um, does, uh, you know, IRS filing or whatever, and the other products don't. Well, then you can add IRS capable RJ12 compliance uh, software or, or, you know, so on and so forth. You get my point. You should kind of look to, you know, how to technically describe the product uh, they're starting off with or, um, you know, the end solution of what your product does and then a description which would be, I think, call that a verb there on the beginning. And then you create, you know, so basically you're gonna have a bunch more because you're gonna have to add that to every keyword. You end up with a few thousand. But on top of that, or in addition, or just by itself, either or you can really pick from these. There's just have to pick one. If you want a 30 to one return on your ad spend, that you gotta pick one of these on top of what I told you before, which is good by itself. Might get you a 10 to one return by itself. Buyer's intent. So. 
uh, you're going to find, and there's a, uh, you could create your own list. I have a list. Um, if you want to ask me, like for your industry, I could probably help you find it. But for like a, a service, it's going to be like service, firm, agency, services, company. And so you're going to tack that on the ending of the keyword. So, so, ba so instead of the low cost or Wi Fi, you know, I, IRS capable, whatever that makes it actually different than the others in the category. You're going to add those on there, and technically, you could put that in the ad as well. It's compliant software, you know, and if you offered a service firm to show you how that works for a local service uh, or a local product that you're selling, it could be near me, uh, nearby so on and so forth, with all, which also indicates buyer intent. So you, there's a big difference between, uh, what, let's just say, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, lumber, lumber company, uh, saying nearby lumber company, and then being able to target that individual keyword, and then obviously you have to go somewhat close in terms of your, how, your radius targeting of your campaign there, versus saying lumber company by itself, which that isn't really, uh, you know, I would go one step further. It's going to be uh, two, by four, two by four lumber for sale or, you know, so you're actually, again, on two le different levels. You're going to describe what, everybody, what nobody else is going to describe and then stick with, like, thereby you combine those two. So I think, uh, I hopefully I explained that well enough. Anyway, the fourth step is use your permutation tool. Once you've created that big list, combining those two different things, uh, the description of something that solves the, you know, this, your, what problem you're solving or technical specification of what you offer and the buying intent or the differentiator on the, on the, on the beginning or end there of the keyword, you take a, there's a, it's called a permutation tool. You can Google it. What it's going to do is it's going to take all the different combinations of the keywords. So it's going to put forwards, backwards. It's going to add service that was on the ending that you had before and now at the beginning and then the middle and so on. Permutations just means the different combinations. And then you're going to end up with an even bigger list on top of that. You might start then have 15,000 keywords or 20,000, 50,000. From there, you go on to your four step and you test keywords for eligibility in your test campaign. So what you do is you create a test campaign in Google. You upload all 50,000 keywords that you have in your list now. And then you bid, you know, a proper amount so that you know, the keywords will show, you know, or to, for good measure, you could start out with 50 bucks a click if you wanted. You're not really going to pay for those ads. It's a little hack here. Or then, because what the problem is, is if a search term doesn't get searched enough by Google standard, they won't, standards, they won't let you bid on it. But what you can do is take all those terms now and then bid on them, and then it'll say low volume on certain keywords where you can't bid, but everything you can, it'll say eligible. And so then it'll take your 50,000 list, get it down to potentially, you know, like, you know, 1,500 or 2,000. But they're all going to be terms no, you can't find on Spifu or anywhere, but you now have. And then now you can have a dedicated ad set up for that and a dedicated page on top of that that you can send people to. So when they're looking for two by four, uh, two by fours for sale near me, you know, or, or whatever there, then you got to add says exactly that. Um, and, and instead of obviously that having the ad say near me, it would be nearby is how I do that. That you are, you have all these terms that have the 30 times potential ROI then right there, you know, they're all eligible. Therefore, when you build a campaign, you know, it's not a waste of time to create an ad for every one of those keywords, which is the second part of this that gets it to work and a, a dedicated landing page or place to, where per, a person can see immediately where they're going to get that two by four product and that you have it in stock or in the compliant software uh, example, you're, where they're going to see RJ12 compliant software with automated reporting to IRS, whatever there. And so then with that, you're going to set up your campaign, know that what's eligible is unique. No, nobody's doing it. You set up a, 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 uh, a you know, a, a, uh, ads where the what the what the keyword is that you're bidding on it goes right there in the headline if it won't fit you shorten it but you hand write the ad for every single eligible keyword you have and then you send people onto a again a landing page so if you're 
as I just mentioned, it's customized. So when the user types in that obscure thing, uh, RG compliant software, where low cost RJ compliant software, the ad says it, and then you take them to a page that right away says low cost RJ7 compliant software, and then describes RJ compliant software and why it's low cost. Again, that's gonna take a long time, but you have the potential of a 30X return with that model. I know it because I've done it. And again, if you don't want to start out with 1,500 terms, do uh, 50 of them. And you're, you could use a similar landing page for every keyword. If all the keywords related to RJ12 in that uh, example that I gave before, you could use one landing page and then that, all that's different is, all, is just a headline. And on your ads each time, the only thing that's different is just the headline one. As, as they call it, and you still have your 31 to word return. I wrote here, a, 10, a 10x versus a 30x return depends on going one or two levels beyond competition on the user experience that you're offering. So if you go one level down, let's say you find, um, again, uh, going back to our previous example, RJ12, if nobody else is bidding on the individual form codes, like in that situation, you go there, but you don't do anything else, 10 to 1 returns pretty easy to do. Uh, after you know you got your ads spooled up and the quality scores are calculated, you get the benefit from your detailed targeting setup, and then therefore your cost per click goes down to about a third where it was originally. And so you're talking three months into the process basically and getting you know a few hundred clicks on that particular keyword either or. And, uh, but if you go one step further, as I was describing down here, where you add the unique, what makes your product unique, and you add that to the keyword, RJ12 processing software, and then you know the low cost on the, on the beginning of it, you go on two different levels there. Or of course, if you uh, sell, if it's not low cost, you can do RJ compliant software for sale or related to that you can still get your 30 to one return. So it's either or, but you do it on the two different levels there. And you have an ad though in either case that you know it has to be in the headline of the ad and then you have to take to a, a person to a page that has a customized headline at the very least, but preferably, or should I say, you have to at least if you're sending them to, if you have an ad that says RJ compliant software, RJ12 compliant software, for sale, the, and that says it in the ad headline, you have to take a person to a page that at least talks about RJ12 compli uh, compliant software, but since you're basically, it makes no sense why it wouldn't, you would also explain why it's low cost also on that page. But there, If you only do it on, like I said, one level takes you only the 10X. Uh, so, and if, you know, for, for the lumber company example, two, uh, two by four, uh, um, you know, two by fours, in Denver uh, would be you have uh, you know 10x return to that particular situation two two by fours for sale in Denver adding that one extra level you have a potential of 30 times return as soon as assuming that you take a person to a, you know again the headline says just what they typed in there matches that and then to a page that actually I would have a page that explains that you're a local lumber supplier and that you sell two by fours and here's where we're at and if you want to look at our catalog to take a look at all the different two by fours that we have you can look at it before we come in so you don't have to feel like you're risking coming in we don't have exactly what you want within the two by four category if you're in that set of situation you can get a 30 times return i have a campaign just like that which is getting a 30 time return on those keywords like that right now not exactly in lumber, but another localized product service where we've done that, that exact level and type of targeting. So in any case, that, ex that spells out the ultimate keyword research, me research method uh, that I have that I use on all of my campaigns. It may not seem that fancy, but I can assure you it does work. If you want to go ahead and got, uh, try this out for yourself and you have any questions, stumble upon anything that you don't understand or can't get, leave a comment down below and I'll certainly uh, try to help you out, get through uh, any stumbling blocks that you come across. And if you like this video, I have lots of other PPC money-making strategy videos here that you can't really find elsewhere on this channel. So you can, you can subscribe. I come up with a video five times a week 
So you can check those out as they come in and you can get a, literally a PhD in PPC just by watching these videos and applying in, you know, what, or at least experimenting with everything I give you that works for, you know, not every company, but most, at least the stuff that applies to you. You try those stuff, things out. If you're not able to make millions of dollars a year in your ads, regardless of what, what you're doing and uh, in, a, in, a, in a, a, you know, a reasonably somewhat big market, you, there's a, you, you, know, you just haven't studied hard enough yet, basically. You can go to guaranteeppc.com slash blog if you want step-by-step -step instructions on how to set up campaigns just like I do for myself on our clients' campaigns to guarantee their results. And so it gives you very specific, you know, if you just want the you know, hand-holding way to set up campaigns that are going to work and get you to a million plus dollar a year revenue campaign in terms of what it generates for you on an eight to one return, follow that guide. I have to do that for our clients every day and make it easy for you. But I hope you enjoyed this video and good luck to you in doing your keyword research uh, for your company to find the 10 to 30 times, you know, upwards or helpfully 30 time return keywords. Uh, ROI uh, or 30x keywords that I'm able to find on our campaigns uh, when the work is proper work is put in.